the heart. It's an organ that's only the size of your fist. Yet, despite its size, it plays an enormous role in keeping you alive. With its constant beating, it transports blood throughout your body, carrying oxygen, nutrients, wastes, and hormones with it. The heart, along with the blood and blood vessels, comprise the cardiovascular or circulatory system. This system is present in vertebrae, such as mammals, birds, and reptiles. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygen-rich blood to your body and oxygen-poor blood to your lungs. Oxygen-rich blood, as you can see by its name, carries oxygen. On the other hand, oxygen-poor blood has carbon dioxide and needs to get removed via the lungs. Your heart is made out of four chambers, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. These chambers are the pathways where the blood travels through in order to get to the lungs or the body. Additionally, the heart has valves. These valves can be seen as traffic lights, so when they open, blood can go to the ventricles or to the body. But when they close, blood can't go anywhere, and this is critical because this prevents the backflow of blood. Let's go over these pathways. After your body takes the oxygen from the blood, carbon dioxide is present. Carbon dioxide needs to be removed from the body, so the oxygen-poor blood enters the heart via the superior and inferior vena cava. After entering, it goes to the right atrium, where it then goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle leads the blood to the pulmonary valve, where it then goes to the pulmonary artery that takes the blood to the lungs to remove the wastes and get oxygen. The newly oxygenated blood enters back into the heart via the pulmonary veins and goes in the left atrium. After entering the left atrium, this blood goes to the left ventricle by taking the mitral valve. The blood from the left ventricle goes to the aortic valve, where it then goes to the aorta, which transports the oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. Notice that all the blood that is in the right side of the heart lacks oxygen, and all the blood in the left side of the heart has an abundance of oxygen, and it's highly important that oxygen-rich blood and oxygen-poor blood don't mix up because if they do, complications can occur. Have you ever heard of the thumping sound your heart makes? Well, those are only the contractions that allow the blood to move throughout your body. These heartbeats start in the sinal atrial node. This node contracts the atria, and because this node generates the impulse needed for the beats, it is known as the pacemaker of the heart. After these electrical impulses are made, the atrioventricular node picks up these impulses and contracts the ventricles. Many factors affect the heartbeat. These include exercise, rest, age, diet, and more. So going back to the discussion of the valves, they open or close depending whether or not the heart is contracting. And when the valves contract, also known as ventricular systole, the aortic and pulmonary valves open to allow the blood to travel to the body. When the heart rests, also known as ventricular diastole, the mitral and tricuspid valve open, so the blood in the atria can travel to the ventricles. Arteries, veins, and capillaries are all blood vessels. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, while veins carry blood to the heart. Now, capillaries are an interesting bunch. They connect both the arteries and the veins, so you can see them as the bridge for the two blood vessels. Capillaries are so thin that blood cells have to line up in a single file. Capillaries are composed of a thin layer called the endothelium, and this allows molecules, oxygen, and blood cells to reach the body easily. Also, wastes, such as carbon dioxide, are able to reach them so that they can later get removed. Speaking of 
of blood vessels, let's talk about the blood itself. Blood is composed of about 45% of cells and 55% of plasma. The cells that you can see in the blood are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Approximately 92% of plasma is water, and the rest are gases, weights, enzymes, proteins, nutrients, and hormones. Plasma is a good transportation system for the body. They carry nutrients to all parts of the body and carry waste to later get removed. Plasma has a vital role in the body in which they help fight off infections. White blood cells or erythrocytes have a critical role in the body and that is it carries the oxygen needed for your cells. How can they carry oxygen? Well, first of all, they have a biconcave shape. Also, there's a protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin can carry the oxygen and carbon dioxide in your body. White blood cells, also known as leukocytes, are the protectors of the body. They fight off the infections that occur, so they are part of the immune system. There are many types of white blood cells. You have your phagocytes, which engulf the pathogens. You also have your lymphocytes that can produce antibodies, which are proteins that can help recognize bacteria and viruses. We've all been in a situation where we got wounded and started bleeding. How does this bleeding stop? Well, that is a job for the platelets, also called the rhombocytes. When there is a broken blood vessel in the body, platelets rush to the location and they gather around it. As they gather around, the rhombin, a clotting enzyme, turns the protein fibrinogen into fibrin filaments. These fibrin filaments make a clot that prevents the further loss of blood. Before ending this video, I recommend you pausing it and summarizing the pathways of the heart. Did you get it correct? Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.